Hey, my name is Annie Lignini. I'm an artist, and you're watching Bronx Vignettes. Answer one question. I'm from Morris Park, um, living here for like 20 years. Um, I would say that I still don't really feel like I'm a part of the Bronx art scene, which sounds kind of nuts. You know, we definitely have our spaces here. I feel like I've worked more with like local groups and like uh, organizations and small venues rather than like any art gallery so that's why I kind of feel like I'm on the outside of like the Bronx art scene I guess I don't know I see a lot of new places popping up uh, which you know just like makes me pause and just question like hey who are you and like what are you doing here um, I think that we unfortunately have to do that now at this point in time um, especially in the Bronx of course like while I'm eager for like any space that like is catering to like the arts and to artists I just have to ask like what are your intentions and who are you what are you doing here and what can you give to my community that's like lasting and um positive and impactful so Bronx Faces started um right as I graduated from Fordham University um I grew up not being super proud to come from the Bronx. It was always like, at least like among my friends and like this narrative in school, I went to school in Manhattan, like all over. So uh, there's this narrative of like, the Bronx is like this terrible place, you need to get out. Um, it's not any place to celebrate, I guess. So I kind of had this ingrained in me growing up and wasn't the first to like admit that I was from the Bronx, like especially like when I was like in school in Manhattan or something. Um, and then when I went to Fordham and I was like one of very few people from the Bronx, I kind of found this, I rediscovered this like newfound Bronx pride. Like, no, I am proud to come here. I, I am proud to come from here. And this place molded me. And like, this is, this made me who I am. Like so much of me is from the Bronx. It's directly related to growing up here. Um, and, you know, I would get a little frustrated with like either students on campus or just like with the administration and like with our relationship with like the neighborhood uh with the Arthur Avenue neighborhood and I realized I had to humble myself like as I graduated and I was like well you know what like you're saying to all these different administrators or um students that they need to love and respect and learn from the Bronx but maybe you should do the same you know it can't hurt for you to do the same what do you know about the Bronx outside of like Arthur Avenue, Morris Park, like the neighborhoods that you grew up in. So it started with me asking one of my friends who's from Gun Hill. I was like, you know, I want to learn more about Gun Hill. Like, what's your favorite food spot? Or like, what's your favorite food spot in the Bronx, period? Like, I want to explore. I want to get to know the Bronx through food, you know? Because that's like a great way to get to know an area and like different cultures. We're so diverse here. And, you know, then I asked a couple more friends who are in different neighborhoods as well. And then I put the call out online because I was thinking, you know, this could, I can benefit. Everyone can give me something. Um, I can learn a lot from everyone. And then I added, I think, like five more questions instead of like, what's your favorite food spot? I was like, what stands out the most for me, like growing up in the Bronx? What do you want me to know about your specific neighborhood or about the Bronx in general? Um, so it was a real humbling moment for me to say like, Oh uh, yeah, you're from here, but like, you can learn too, you know? And even after, like, you know, uh, reading everyone's submissions, I still don't even feel like I'm an authority. I still have so much to learn from everyone, and that's, that's been nice. 
and then going off of this idea of like Bronxites controlling our narrative, like that's exactly it. It's like we are writing our own histories through like an unfiltered tongue and that's so important for me. Uh, I don't edit any of the responses. Uh, if anything, I may say like, hey, can I combine like two of your answers because I can't pick one, like I love them both. Um, I've never had to, I've, I've never gone in and like made edits myself. Like I, I refuse to do that, I will never do that. I let people speak the way that they wanna speak, use whatever language they want. Um, I may have to, um, you know, bleep out like certain language, but I still allow it to uh, be present like in the response. That's just been really important for me to like, us taking control of like our narratives, our histories and like providing the proper context to, all right, why might some people wanna leave the Bronx? Like, let's dive into that, like why? You know, like let's not just um, project this story or this view, um, which is why every Bronx face is titled with the person's name, the year that they were born and their neighborhood to just provide like a little more of a context to their response. It went from me just trying to learn more about my home to this like big storytelling project, which I really love and I'm, I feel like really honored that people are trusting me like with their stories and like their faces, you know? I think once you put the story and the portraits together, it, um, it kind of forced you to like reconsider and take a deeper look and I don't know. You want to go deeper with this project.